Well, Daniel and Matt, thanks for joining me. I appreciate you. I appreciate Team Harold and the Northmark team. And this is an awesome day. We sold the Dutch Bros in Allen, Texas today. So a big day for us. Thank you very much. Thank you. We got it done. Exciting to hear the news that it's closing. Absolutely. Congrats. Yeah, yeah, an epic day. So we we appreciate all your help. Um, I wanted to just do a little bit of a debrief here and talk about the marketing process. Uh, Daniel, I think you were rattling off some of the timeframes here as to how long the process took. Yeah. So we, we try to track all of like the key metrics of uh, obviously the deal in terms of, you know, when it, when an LOI gets signed, when does a contract get signed? When does the deal go non refundable When does the deal close? But then we also back up and track when was the asset initially launched to the market uh, so that we can see what the to market to strike in a deal timeline is. And, you know, you get enough data points, it starts to tell you a story. But what was interesting on this is that the dates were exactly the same. So from the marketing launch, uh, to when we struck this LOI with this buyer was 55 days, um, which is, you know, in this market, that's probably about right. You know, that's probably about what we're normally seeing. Um, you know, three years ago, it'd be 10 days, but you know, that's just the state of the market, but you know, what was really accelerated and it was just the nature of an all cash 1031 buyer is from the LOI date in which we signed to close was 55 days. So they accelerated their due diligence and their closing process. Once they kind of got through it, we signed the contract fairly quickly and they're well on their way. And once we kind of worked out a couple of issues, they're ready to close. And here we are at the closing table. You know, it's kind of a sprint to the finish there at the end anyways for us on the developer side. And as we put this under LOI, we were sitting there at, right at the end of May, start of June. And, uh, you know, we're cranking fear fast and furious trying to get the store turned over to Dutch and then them to get it open. And a lot of that closing time frame really gets pinned on when the store is actually going to open because, of course, the investor wants a store that's fully operational, it's running, you know, our GC is finished out, we've closed out our file with them, paid them out, et cetera. So, Matt, how did the how was the marketing process on this one compared to some of the other stuff that you're working on selling? Uh, Matt, I'd say from an activity standpoint, um, higher than, than our, our typical listing right now. I mean, obviously, the, the 20-year lease stood out compared to other Dutch Bros locations. Uh, Allen uh, being a really strong uh, market with a lot of high growth. You have 194,000 average household income within a mile, which is you know obviously a standout. And I'd have to imagine, you know, in that upper, you know, 99th percentile for all Dutch Bros locations. Um, so yeah, a lot of activity. Obviously, you know, where it's priced, you're, you're looking for a cash buyer. Uh, we were able to find that. We were actually able to get some other cash offers. I think you were, I think you said we were probably going to find mattress money on this deal, which didn't turn out to be mattress money, but it was a 1031 buyer. It was all cash. So it, it, it worked out well. Um, and, and just, you know, really, I think, you know, with the buyer, for the most part, you know, a smooth process. You know, once they, they really, you know, it's all love with the deal, they, they moved quickly and, and you got it done about it. And, and this buyer in particular is a repeat buyer. It's a, they own other Dutch Bros locations. That's correct. And they even just bought one in, in uh, I think, the San Antonio market. So they're, they they like Texas. It worked out well. Matt, I often get is as I post material about Dutch Bros, uh, one of the common themes, uh, you know, from the comments that come back are just people wondering who who is the buyer profile? Like, who's the type of person that buys a Dutch and why? Uh, what What are your thoughts there? Yeah, I think I think there's there's a few different reasons. I mean, first, um, you know, the, the growth is is a great story, and Dutch is growing, you know, by leaps and bounds. Uh, and you know, I think a lot of buyers see it as an opportunity to get in early uh, with with a growth tenant, um, and just your credit's going to continue to get better uh, over time. Um, also, you know, they're just one of the more landlord friendly leases in, in the market um, compared to you know a competitor like Starbucks, where you got a lot of landlord responsibilities. I mean, Dutch is a very passive asset. Um, and, and, you know, they've done a great job and, you know, developers like yourself and site selection, they're usually strong locations. And, um, I think, you know, sometimes that footprint and the size, you know, gives you a little bit more flexibility to get into some, you know, tighter markets and, uh, you know, buyers seem to have and like it. So there's, there's a lot of different value drivers there, but I'd say 
you know, I really the growth story has helped quite a bit. Thinking through kind of the average, you know, typical customer that's going to buy an asset like this from you, how many assets do they usually own? How old are they typically? Are they retired? Are they active professionals? Do they do commercial real estate for a living? Like who's kind of the personality of the buyer? Yeah. I mean, typically it's your, your private investor that, yeah, they're probably not a full-time real estate investor and they, they have a side job. I mean, this, this buyer is a home builder. Um, that's their, their day to day, but you know, they, they're investing in real estate, trying to build up, you know, their portfolio. Um, you know, it, it's typically somebody who's older and they're maybe doing some estate planning. Uh, but you do get, you know, people like this that are like, still in the prime of their career that, you know, just want to make sure they're getting out ahead of it and, and building their portfolio. So, but I'd say the private buyer is, is typically what you're, you're, you're finding or family trust, um, just, you know, really trying to get a lot of passive income, um, for their estate planning. So that flexible lease kind of landlord friendly lease and an easy tenant that's growing and they can see the growth pad that those are the attractions into <laughs> Dutch specific. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, um, I think a lot of buyers reach out interested in buying in the coffee space. So I would say the crown jewel, but the certainly the elephant leading in the pack in terms of the largest operator. And, but the Dutch lease is so much more attractive than the Starbucks lease currently. You have 15 years versus the traditional 10 year Starbucks lease. You have 10% bumps. Uh, every five years, you have that in Starbucks, but you're going to get two bonds, you know, in a 15 year lease. And then the, uh, it's much more passive. It's from an expense standpoint, and that's just uh, in some cases are absolute or true triple net leases, whereas the Starbucks leases have some lame or responsibilities. So we always get that buyer, the 1031 buyer, typically that's like, I want to buy in the poppy space and the dumps lease is so much more attractive to me that. I don't really care about the credit differential. I just want a better or more path at least. Yeah, that's, those are, those are great points. It's interesting to me. A lot of the time, I don't think most people understand that people that are building their net lease income portfolios are building them very similar to the building their financial portfolios, where you might have a allocation of a certain percentage of your portfolio being at bonds. And then the portfolio that's allocated to equities, you might split that between, you know, value, uh, large cap growth, right? And similar in the net lease investment space is pretty common as any of us are dealing with these buyers and the family offices that are putting portfolios together. They might have an auto parts store and a burger store too, and then they might have a bank, but they don't have coffee. And so when they call team Harold, when they call Dave or Matt, the, the question that's coming out of their mouth is where should I go buy a coffee store? That's the exposure I'm missing in my, in my bucket. You know, no, no category there. And I just, just a function of real estate, you know, what real estate do they want, um, and then yield. And so if they're going to want to push for a higher yield, the one being the poppy space, then they're going to go down the road of the seven brew or the scooters type deals. But if they want, you know, the, the two that are leave the pack and they're comfortable with the yield that those two assets command, then they're going to buy a Starbucks at batch. All right, so now's the now's the fun part of the call for you boys. Uh, you get to pound your chest. You get to tell the world what you did here today uh, because you did some excellent work here. We're super proud of you, Force of Development. We're totally thrilled with uh, how you guys handled the marketing. So what kind of cap rate did you get here, and how does that compare to the market, and why, why did you get the cap versus where the kind of market is trending at the moment? Matt? Do it. Okay. Um, well, ends. All right, we go well. We got no, a 530 cap, um, uh, two million nine twenty five. Uh, I'm actually, if you want to get technical, 529 nine, we'll, we'll round up. Um, for, yeah, I mean, it really, I'm happy with it because you know, again, most fee simple deals, uh, for, for Dutch, we've seen some rise of cap rates there, we've seen it growing delta with, with the growl leases. So, in terms of a, a fee simple deal, you know, it's the best cap rate we've seen. And, and hit a while. You see some other 20 year ones trade, you know, 10, 15 base ones higher than that. Um, you know, so one in Dallas, you know, it was a fee simple deal just west of here. I mean, some 2 million price point trade by the half. So I think, you know, 530 feels all right. You know, I always want to do better than that, but I, I think, you know, at the end of the day, having the cash fire, 
to be able to close quickly, you know, it's a value too. So, you know, it's, it's definitely something that I think will stand up for a while until, you know, maybe you see the cap rate compression of each other. Walk us, Daniel, through some of the macro trends going with Dutch at the moment. But where are you seeing the cap rates head and are ground leases trading similar to, to the build the suits to the full building leases? Well, I think we're, we're seeing a couple of trends. I mean, from an inventory standpoint, we track inventory every month, as well as closings for uh, for Dutch every month, and the inventory continues to rise on the market. And so that's just a function of the supply of product that is getting delivered to Dutch and rents to Met City. And you know, developers like yourself are putting those on the market is outpacing the current demand. And so it's not what's got to give in order to move the inventory of cap rates have to go up. That's, that's, or, you know, the market returns to such that the 1031 buyer pool that increases and all of a sudden demand, you know, you receive some of equilibrium, which we just haven't experienced. And I don't think we'll experience that the balance of this year. So cap rates continue to go up. And the second trend is that, you know, Dutch has, um, typically, um, done more ground lease structures and they're really pushing away from that and putting the burden on the developers to do it, build a suits. And it's just a function of capital allocation. I uh, think Dutch doesn't want to tie up their capital building their own buildings. And so you're seeing more, you know, larger rent, which mean larger deal sizes. Um, and, um, you know, that impacts the, the buyer pool, the smaller the deal, the larger the buyer pool that occurs. And so that's slowing down the market a little bit as well. Now, the advantage of buying a fee simple is that, you know, the, the buyer does benefit from depreciation. And in some cases, you could cost seg the building and and maybe um, enhance the depreciation that you would get on the front end. So that obviously comes into play. But we're definitely seeing a trend of more fee simple uh, Dutch Brothers hitting the market versus the ground basis. Uh, for the development, we have uh, worked through... Um, I think about 25 building dispositions. And through that process, we've been able to be fortunate to be able to work with great, talented people like Daniel and Matt and most of the other high volume net lease brokers across the country. Part of the reason we chose Team Herald here is due to the data. Uh, they were one of the very first groups that started tracking monthly about 18 or 19 months ago and tracking how many Dutch bros were available in the country and then scrubbing that report the following month to figure out what sold what was still on market, what has been repriced. And then they provide that lifetime data to me and some of their other developer clients. And it, it quite literally is one of the best resources out there that we're using as we look at new deals, because as Porter and, and Brent and our team start the underwriting process on any new transaction, one of the things we have to immediately determine is what does our development spread look like? And to know that, you really have to know where cap rates are headed, not where they are today, but where are they headed? And, and certainly during this time period where we've gone through where it's been a tumultuous interest rate ride over the last you know two years here, it's been super helpful. So we totally appreciate Team Harold and, and all the work you do. Well, we appreciate this is our third deal, if you, if you can believe it. Um, so we're excited to, and we feel blessed every time you call us and give us the nod to work on another assignment. So we definitely appreciate the opportunity to sell this deal in, in kind of my backyard. Um, and uh, I urge subjects to see it get done and ready for the next one. And, and we're not too disappointed that you got a better cap rate on the Utah deal for my friends, Dan and Steve, because they're my friends. It, that's a, it also was a ground lease. This was a bit. This, yeah, it, it, it's the Utah factory. Hey, listen, if you're going to get a better cap rate for anybody, at least you got it for my buddies. So.